Hello and welcome once again to my channel Covenant Child and where I just want to bless you and I just want to encourage you out of the Word of God and empower you and motivate you, inspire you for whatever you're going through. And so I trust you're going to be blessed and encouraged as well by the short word I want to bring with you and share um, today. I want to read out of Judges, Judges chapter 6 verse 10 to verse 16. It's the well-known story um, about the call of Gideon. And so the scripture says from verse 11, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abezerite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all these wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. I am not sending, am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord replied, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. The Israelites were oppressed by the Midianites, and they called out to God for help. And God heard their cry, as he always does when we call out to him in times of need. And Gideon is found by the angel in a wine press. Now the wine press was a place where, as the word says, where wine was made, where the grapes were put in. It was a deep pit in which the wine was pressed to uh, start the process of making wine. But we see that Gideon was not making wine in the wine press. Instead, he was threshing wheat. Threshing was supposed to be done on a hilltop. Threshing was normally done on the top of the mountain and the wheat was thrown up into the air. The wind would catch it and the chaff would be taken away. But we see here that Gideon was actually threshing wheat in a wine press. Why? Because he was hiding away from the Midianites. Gideon was actually scared. Gideon was scared of the Midianites because the Midianites were, were oppressing them and he was hiding in the wine press and doing threshing of wheat which was not the place that he was supposed to be doing it but the angel comes to him and talks to him and threshing also talks about the separation God is separating Gideon for his calling for his purpose that God wants for him God calls us wherever we are. He comes and he reaches out to us. He knows what purpose he has for us and he's calling us wherever we are. And he reaches out to Gideon there in the threshing on the uh, threshing wheat in the wine press. Gideon was scared. He was scared because of the Midianites. But the amazing thing is that when God called Gideon and approached Gideon, God calls to him and doesn't call him a scared man. God calls him a mighty warrior. The King James Version says, a man of mighty valor. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. That's what the angel says to him. And this tells me that God, when he looks at us, he doesn't see us. As we see ourselves. Gideon was scared. He didn't know what to do. But God didn't call him scared man. God didn't call him a fearful man. God called him a mighty warrior. You see, God sees us the way we're already going to be. With God, there is no time. So God is not just here in the present but he's also in the future. God was already seeing Gideon as this mighty warrior that was going to deliver his people from the Midianites. And that tells me that God, when he looks at us, he doesn't see us as we see ourselves. 
We see ourselves perhaps as being small. We see ourselves as being afraid. We put limitations on ourselves. We see ourselves and describe ourselves in many ways. But God does not see us that way. He is already seeing us according to the purpose that he has planned for us. And because he was already seeing and knowing that Gideon was going to be a mighty warrior, he was calling Gideon, Gideon by that name. So God will call you by the name that he sees you at. And he's not happy that, he stay, that we stay in the place. And you know, Gideon argues with God. As many of us argue when God calls us. We, he argues, he says, but I'm the least. I'm the, I'm, I'm, my clan is the weakest. I'm the least in my family. And the Lord answered, I will be with you. God doesn't care what you look like. He doesn't care about the, 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 the limitations that you've put on yourself. He doesn't see you the way you see yourself. God is seeing you already in the future as that man and that woman that you're going to be doing mighty exploits for, you, for him. God takes the least. Gideon says, I'm the least. My clan is the smallest. But God doesn't look at that. He looks at what you're going to become. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8, Paul writes and he says, Although I am less than the least of God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ. He says, I'm the least. I'm less. He actually says, I'm the less than the least. Which makes him so small. He says, I'm less than the least. But he says, it's by your grace that you have given me. Just to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ. And you know, God doesn't look at all of those things. He sees you as you're going to become. And we can go through the Bible and we will see many of the men and women that God reached out. Moses. When God reached out to Moses, Moses had an impediment, a speech impediment. He was a stutterer. But God called him. David was the youngest, also the least. That when Samuel came, Samuel didn't even, was looking at the physical uh, stature of his brothers. Samuel didn't even think that this would be the one. But God didn't look at that. He was just a shepherd boy. Peter denied the Lord. But God reached out to him and made him a mighty warrior. And made him a great apostle. And Paul, as we just read, Paul was a murderer. He killed God's people. And that's why Paul could say, I'm the least. Even less than the least, he says. My friends, I want to just encourage you that God will take you from a wine press like he took Gideon and make you into a warrior. It's not about your family. It's not about your birth. It's not about your race. It's not about your gender. God will lift you up because he sees you already as you're going to be. He's seeing you already as that instrument that he can use. He's seeing you already because you are in Christ. He sees you in Christ. And because you are in Christ, he sees you as a mighty warrior. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 26 to verse 29, Paul writes again and he says that God chooses the least. He chooses the foolish things to confound the wise. He doesn't look at the things which man looks at. He doesn't look at the things which humans value and put value onto those things. As long as we are willing, and Gideon was willing Eventually, after Gideon had, had, had proven and tested God, God didn't, Gideon went in the strength of God and became that mighty warrior that God had promised him to be. So I want to encourage you with this word, that you might find yourself in a wine press today. You might find yourself being scared 
but God wants to change you into a warrior. He can make you into an instrument for His glory. We know the name of Gideon today because Gideon was willing to step out of the wine press, was willing to get out of the wine press and say, well, God, if you believe I can do this, then I'm going to. So I want to challenge you as well and encourage you that no matter who you are, no matter what country you're watching this from, and you think I'm too small, I'm too weak, I'm the least, I don't even have education, I don't have money, that's not what qualifies you to be used by God. A willing heart, the availability, surrender to God, that's what he's looking for. All these men and women that, that, that God used in the word, they surrendered to God. They were willing to give their lives. And God can change you from a wine press to a warrior. I trust that you have been blessed and that you will put your faith in him and allow him to use you so that you can become a warrior in the kingdom of God. God bless you. And if you have been blessed by this, please like, subscribe to my channel, write a comment at the below. And I trust we will continue to walk this journey as I just share some truths out of the word of God so that you can be blessed and be encouraged on your journey with God. God bless you.